on here, man? We got a session with a lot of females here underneath the bridge at LES Skate Park. We're having a great time. It's all because of the Barbara Kruger exhibit that's going on that's really taking a really good look at how we're a bunch of fucking consumers and how we shouldn't be and how people buy these fucking bullshit brands and think that it has something to do with skateboarding and it's got nothing to do with fucking skateboarding. They just bullshit people stealing people's money. They're fucking thieves. They take other people's art and they fucking steal and they make you think that buying shit's important. This is what's important. Skateboarding is important. So we're having a fun time shooting some female skateboarders today in line with Barbara Kruger's feminist messages and anti-consumerist messages. Let me take some more photos. All right, brother.
Kids going crazy. Little handball action if you need. Here we are, walking up to the skateboard park. A little chilly day in New York City. People getting warmed up, getting ready to rock. A lot of coffee being drank, a lot of hot tea. Skate park, brother. What are we thinking here? What are we talking about? Good job, Dustin. Is it feeling smooth? Good lines? Good curves? Good creep? Good lines. All good right, lines. man. Oh, yeah. Right, any shout outs to the boys out west? Shout out to Rick and Buddy. Yeah, Bud Bear. Sick. That's a Rick and Buddy reference right there, East Coast style. Jack Glenn Friedman. How we doing, Glenn? What are we looking like? Alright. Alright. Yep. 46 degrees, New York City. A little chilly. People are hanging, chilling. Sleepy day. But it's all good. Got some killer artwork up. City that never sleeps, New York. Some local rippers. Yeah, this is it. It's the park. It's the grit. It's how we do it. Yeah. So 
How are we feeling, man? We're we feeling good. New York City Live, Juice Magazine, trying to keep it real. <laughs> Everybody's chilling, man. We're just out here trying to have a good time. Underneath the bridge. Big old bridge. man come on down to the skate park you're not you're not gonna ride the pool coping to Chelsea come on down here and cruise and wake up grab a coffee Glenn did you ever you know who made the scene fuck you Glenn Friedman yeah I did <laughs> it's great it's sick right yeah I like it <laughs> uh, Bill you guys seen that Bill was it Bill from uh Bill uh I don't want to be on TV, not not. not. <laughs> no, it's, it's a photographer from Texas. He said, that was good. I like that. <laughs> There's that a, a magazine called Fuck You, Glenn it's a fancy. Friedman. It's, it's his butt. <laughs> it was based it's on shooting you know, a lot of classic, classic photos. There was pictures of me getting in the guy's way at a skate contest. Like, cause I, you know, he didn't have access to get on the coping, and I was on the coping. And I'm like, he's got like a lot of great skate photos, but I happen to be in front of him on every one. <laughs> so like, if you crop me out, he's got, he's like a little far away. Um, uh, God, I'm, it's too early in the morning, Bill. Don't be mad at me for not remembering your last name. But, uh, you know, the first yeah. thing they teach you in black and white photo class, get close, right? I don't know. I always like to get close. That's my thing. I like you get as close. Close to the action and closer to the most intense part of the action. There you go. Like, you know, it's all about character and composition. So what do you say to the up and coming photographers out there, man? You got it too easy. You got it way too easy, huh? I still shoot film, it's hard. I don't know if anything I shot today is going to come out. We'll see when I get it back from the lab. What do you got, a week turnaround on that? That'll be a couple days. 30 bucks for one roll. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's fucking like 30 degrees out here right now, brothers and sisters. 30 degrees. That's right. We have a mission. We're trying to shoot these signs before they get come down, you know, for Barbara Kruger. And, uh, you know, you know, a very uh, well respected artist that I respect, you know, has a lot of good things to say. Right on, man. So one o'clock at uh, Performa, there's a meeting with the women and interviews. Yes, yeah, there's a talk. Yeah, panel discussion. Talk to Sasha. Let her tell you what, everything. Where is that? Where can people go? It's at 427 go? Broadway, Soho, corner of Broadway and Howard. Okay, one o'clock. Okay, be there. Be there. All right, aloha. Catch you later and uh, peace out. Welcome to the third heavy discussion panel today. Um, I'm really excited about it. Thank you, Sasha at Performa, for getting this set up. Um, yeah, so today 
I wanted to basically kind of give you some background on the event. Um, I started hosting panels as a way to communicate to people interested in learning about the community surrounding my brand Onto, which is a sneaker company, um, a little bit more about my background. Um, for, so for those of you who probably don't know, I have a sneaker company, and I started it after about 10 years working in the footwear industry. Um, and uh, I actually used to apprentice at a shoe factory exactly one block down the road from here uh, called E. Vogel's, it's a little shoe factory. And, uh, and, and now that I'm sitting here talking to you guys, it's kind of funny. So, small world. Um, and then I also worked at Autumn Skate Shop, which was in the East Village. And that's how I also know like a bunch of uh, people from out here is because being there at that time, you know, it was just like a really great like spot to kind of hang out at. Uh, next to Tompkins. So, yeah, Heavy start, or my brand started out, or Heavy Discussion, sorry, started out as a reaction to the sort of perfect soundbite culture that comes with starting a new company. That's not who I am at all, so I figured instead um, I would start panels to give more dimension to what Onto is about. Um, my first panel was held about a month ago, and like a few of you have been to like all of them, which is so awesome and rad and really encouraging, so thanks. Um, and the first one I did was actually a skateboarder owned business panel, and some of those guys are here today, uh, which is sweet. And the second one was the first women in skateboarding panel I hosted. Today, um, actually, is happening because at the last panel, I asked the panelists what they thought about Barbara Kruger's upcoming installation at the LES Skate Park. And so when Sasha heard that, it was just really coincidental. And she was like, hey, like, would you be interested in continuing this discussion um, at Performa? So that's where we're here today. And so just to give you more focused sort of background on this particular discussion, as you can see from the projection, the projects here in the Performa Biennials takes on scholarship to examine immediate and critical concerns confronting our urban centers the shifting political and cultural currents, the roles of the arts and of artists in supporting afflicted communities. So here we're gonna be talking about skating as like an art form and skateboarding as a sport. Um, and yeah, without further ado, I wanna talk about how I know each and every one of my guests here and maybe they can also share with us when they started skating, what year that was, and where they're from. Because the last time people were talking about their stories, and people were like, oh wait, like, why does it sound wherever they're from is like really tropical? And like that person sounds like it's super East Coast. So yeah, I thought that it would benefit today's conversation by doing that as well. So yeah, so first up, Lacey Baker. Ooh, the homie. Hello. <laughs> um, I'm Lacey, I started skating when I was two, I think. Um, I grew up in Covina, California, and yeah, that's about it for me. <laughs> oh, and how we know each other oh. is uh, a mutual friend, Amy Carone, uh, out in California, grew up skating with her, and after I moved away from San Francisco like 13 years ago, um, these girls started hanging out a lot more, and uh, when Lacey moved out here, just a little shy under a year ago, she was like, oh, you definitely have to hang out with Jolene, blah, blah, blah. And so that eventually happened, and, uh, and yeah. Been best friends ever yeah, since. Ever since, ever since. BFF. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So yeah, next up, Alyssa Steamer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> started skating in Fort Myers, Florida. That's where America goes to die. <laughs> uh, probably Sick. in like 1983. Yeah. Rad. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Is that it? Yeah, um, and actually, Alyssa, uh, it's the first time I'm meeting Alyssa, this whole project. Um, and I'm really psyched that she agreed to be a part of this experimental forum. It's a really big honor to be on a panel with everyone up here. So yeah, thanks for coming out. And she happens to live really close to my mom's house, which is like really coincidental out there. Yeah. Cool, Alexis. Um, I'm Alexis. Uh, I um, start. <laughs> Uh, 
I started skateboarding. I grew up in Old Saybrook, Connecticut. Uh, yeah. And I started skateboarding uh, in 1996. When I was 10. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get together? Oh, yeah. How do you think? Thanks for keeping it on track. I'll, I'll need that. Um, Alexis, shit, man. Well, I first. Think Amy. Yeah, Amy definitely, but yeah, before that was definitely PG Lads, Wonderful, Horrible Life. I uh, remember seeing you in those videos, and then eventually, just like the girl skate community, you just end up meeting each other and stuff like that. And, and yeah, so we hung out in Long Beach a while ago. Yeah, at yeah, Amy's. at Amy's, yeah, yep. exactly. So, But I'd heard about you like before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> heard about me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was all good. Yeah. And Reyes. Hi, I'm Jamie, Jamie Reyes. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I grew up skateboarding in Hawaii, Honolulu. Started skating in 92. And how did we meet? I was going to put you in the face. Yeah, right? no, she was She was like really mean to me when I first met her. Nice. Actually, she got up. Nice. I'm not that mean. I'm nice. But we're talking about former Reyes. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's just tough love as we've, you know, I've convinced myself at this point. I love you, Julie. You got nothing but love for you. <laughs> but I think that was uh, at actually Vancouver Slam City. Well, and was puking underneath the ramp? Probably. That's probably, yeah, that was probably it. Uh, never meet your heroes. Um, they'll probably be puking under a ramp. No, I'm just kidding. No, that's cool. Um, but yeah, that was probably it. And obviously, everyone knows everyone. So, uh, so yeah, that was a natural kind of... Uh, you know, Max Fish and Max Fish, that too. <laughs> cool. Home sweet home. I love Max Fish. <laughs> Shout Just out. in case you didn't know, Razo. <laughs> yeah, Razo. Razo. Right there. Razo. Right there. Razo. <laughs> and uh, Sarah K. Right here. Hi, Sarah. And Sarah K. Right here next to me. Yeah. yeah. One of my oldest friends, actually. So literally. Well, I mean, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's so weird to come after all of these guys, and I'm I'm just Jillian's friend in the '80s. Um, I kind of been skating ever since. I love it. And I met Jillian when she was 14 at a skate spot, uh, Wallenberg in San Francisco. And yeah, did you do the Wallenberg dab? No. No, I She was clinging to the fence yeah. as I was skating by looking for the spot. And she showed me uh, the place in the fence where you could peel it open and get in so you didn't have to go all the way around. Sick. Um, but yeah, just, we met skating and have been friends ever since. And I've lived with Sarah and I've known Jamie through mutual friends in Hawaii and now I've met these folks. So there are fewer degrees of separation. And now we're here. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Um, oh yeah. Did you mention where where you grew up skating? No, she did not. I started skating in Boston when I started Northeastern University. Okay, cool. So now that we have the intros out of the way, I guess uh, the spring work question then is uh, basically gonna. Start from again uh, Kruger's installation at the Lower East Side Skate Park. Um, I had previously had some discussions around it, and one of the thoughts about it was it was interesting that she was basically performing on the skate park, you know, with these like giant red vinyl uh, banners with all of these sorts of statements, like very hard to ignore statements. And so, in that way, it's to me like the most immediate example of skateboarding as art and since it's been up some skaters have questioned what the purpose of the art was and is it infiltrating the skate park uh, uh, you know essentially that kind of makes you feel that way I mean if it was a coca-cola banner I'm sure people would have felt differently about its presence there so yeah so like Unlike skateboarding as an art form, I feel that there's never, there's this newer undeniable aspect of skating as a sport. Um, you know, in the past, I think that as skaters, people would go out of their way to separate themselves from like jocks and things like that. So now it's hard to deny the lucrative sport aspect when big companies like Nike, New Balance, and Adidas are involved. So my first question is, A, did you guys like the installation? And um, also, did you ever view yourselves 
as neighbors as, as athletes growing up. So, yeah. Or, yeah, Let me kick this off. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were just skating there together this morning. It was very chilly. Um, very cold. Very cold, but really nice. And honestly, like, I really enjoy Barbara Kruger's work and historically her contributions to just graphic design and logo making. Her whole aesthetic, wonderful. But I, uh, it was impactful being there, but then once you start skating, it's not even there. It kind of just disappeared in the background for me. Um, and that was just my immediate reaction being there. It's like, reading the words, yeah, different. I'm not being advertised to. It's not like showing me pictures or saying weird things or it's not like branding. It was more of a thoughtful language. Uh, but I just turned it off. My brain turned it off once I was there. Um, so there's that aspect. And then second point, what as an athlete? Yeah, you, you skateboard as an athlete. Uh, I, this is contentious sometimes, but I personally do see skateboarders as amazing athletes. Um, it's super athletic, so yes, yes I do. In, I mean, you know, like culturally, like born out of like this anti heroism and, you know, that phrase like jock mentality and the fight against that, um, it's transformed that and it's transformed like, I guess, sport and athleticism as you know it being like a new sport. So, um, skateboarders and skateboarding, it's beautiful. It's like amazing feats of physical everything and like mental everything, all the things as skateboarders, like watching other skateboarders. Um, I find it very athletic, yes. Cool, awesome, thank you. Um, I guess I want to say um, I love the installation and I think it's, it's just interesting to, I mean first to have a famous female artist like that um, have her work at place you see every day or that you spend a lot of time in and that's what's I think interesting about it kind of I go to I live in New York I go to LES pretty often so when suddenly there's installation it makes you kind of see the same thing in a, in a new way um, and just kind of you know yes just words but um, in that context you start to I don't know it changes what you're used to seeing and you kind of think about it, you can't help, you know, you're obviously, you can't just filter that out, so I think it was pretty cool to have that there. Um, I f as for skateboarding as a sport, um, is that, was that the question? Or uh, sorry, do, you do I see myself as an athlete? As an athlete yeah, you um, I think that's, you know, I think skateboarding came from a place that was kind of anti- Athlete, the idea of skateboarding as a sport, you know, when I first started skateboarding, it was like that was an insult, you know, because um, just, I mean, it's nothing to do, like, definitely skateboarding, there's an athleticism to it to use your body, it's hard on your body, but just I think that the reason that skateboarding, like, always wanted to make a point of, like, being separate is just kind of, it's not a team sport, it's not the thing that you're like push you to do to be part of like a you know some organized sport with a clear goal it's something you usually more often than not like you find on your own and pursue as an individual so I think that you know definitely like a lot has changed and it's hard on the one hand for me to say that and still think and believe that but then also you know I say boarding contests and they're on TV and that's, so I guess, you know, in a way, I am an athlete, but skateboarding, it's like, it's more than a sport, it's not a sport, it's, um, I don't know, a lot more, so I don't like to call it that and hope it, there's always some part of it that is clearly, like, not that. Um, not to, not to shit on sports, you know, it's just, skateboarding is something different, so, yeah. I don't think uh, athlete because 
you don't athletes don't get chased up chased out by cops. Uh, right? <laughs> true, true story. <laughs> yeah, that's what I my opinion. And did you like the uh, installation? The installation? Yeah, I didn't mind it. It's kind of <laughs> being just like yeah, whatever. Kind of like like she said, back of your head after that. Because you're concentrating on your feet and your board, not at look, looking at the logos when you're trying to come up. Right. When I first walked into the skate park today, it's the first time I've been there. I live in San Francisco, so, um, thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I first walked in, I saw, like, refurbished by Nike. Oh, yeah. I saw, uh, like, a sign that said refurbished by Nike uh, on the wall. And then when I walked in, I was like, oh, I think he changed their font up a little bit. <laughs> Black and white to red and white. But then I realized that it was, you know, not that. And, uh, and then I started reading it, and it was like, who's hopes, who's whatever, you know. I was like, that's super inspirational, you know, I liked it a lot. Um, and as far as, like, I think in skateboarding, like, like Alexa said, when it started, it was like, no sports, you know, but I think uh, I think now, you know, skateboarding is like what what you make of it, you know. There's like jocks in skating, there's like artists in skating, there's everybody, you know. Um, so I, I feel like it's you know whatever you make it, you know. You want to be a jock about it, you're gonna be a jock about it. You you know you want to be artsy about it, and creative, <laughs> you're gonna do that, you know. So um, yeah, I feel like it's just you know up to the individual, which is a beautiful thing, but I feel like, it, I don't know if like a word can describe what it is, you know, skateboarding, I think like we always try to define what it is, but like at the end of the day, it's like you're riding a piece of wood on wheels, you know, <laughs> it's like a toy, <laughs> so it's like playing. <laughs> um, but uh, something about that playing, like, you know, transforms lives and stuff like that, so. Pretty amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, so when I started skating, I didn't obviously think of it as a sport either. I mean, I was like two years old. I didn't even know what the hell it was. But um, over time, I've been like pretty obsessive about like learning tricks and stuff. And it is like more of a creative thing. But as I've gotten older, I feel like I need to take care of myself more as an athlete so that I can skate longer. So in that sense, I'm kind of a jock about it, but at the same time, it's like, whatever. I just like love to skate and I always will, so that's my take on that. <clears throat> and yeah, for the installation, I think it's really rad to see like women's art in there and like to know that Supreme got all of their inspiration from her and then for it to come around full circle and to like have her art in a skate park, I think is really cool. And I think it sends a, a good message out to just like, we're all out here doing whatever, so it's great. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna talk about the art piece of it. Um, I think if I was 15 years younger, I would have a different opinion about the installation, but I, you know, in the world that we live in, um, people are kind of um, forgetting what really living is about, and so it, it's it's really thought provoking to actually have these questions and reminders that you know there's something else going on in the world, and you kind of. Uh, you need to look outside of the, this going through the motions and and uh, think about what you're doing and how you're impacting um, the world that we live in because like there's so much shit going on. So the installation was amazing to me and and I could see um, young people questioning it, but like I think they should like research it and like realize like you know your existence shouldn't be so insular because there's so much shit going on in the world so I'm really happy that she was able to um, use that platform to 
actually <coughs> create something thought provoking for kids and hopefully the kids that are actually skating will ultimately realize what the message is. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. That was awesome. Great, great start, you guys. Um, so yeah. So speaking of sports, I mean, there is also the reality that I grew up playing a ton of sports anyway, um, in addition to skating. So even though, like, maybe in my family, I was probably like the first generation that was like not like allowed to play sports, but like I think my mom and her generation, like baby boomers, um, you know, uh, most of her family was like more like. She, like they, like her, my grandmother was part of feudal China in a lot of ways. So like the, you know, the things that they imparted, like m you know, mentally, was reflective more of like, yeah, maybe your role as a woman isn't to like be playing sports, or it's like not really seen as natural or something. Um, you want to focus on other things. Um, and so, also me being American and like me coming of age, you know, in the 90s or whatever, it's a very different era. So if someone tells you you can't do something. There's no fucking way that you're going to listen to them anyway, you know? So, um, so yeah, my next question, I guess, has to do with, uh, did you guys ever play sports growing up, and, you know, were you encouraged to skate? Um, I didn't play any sports at all, any team sports, unless it was, like, in PE, like, in middle school or something. But I was, like, my mom was always down for me to skate because she didn't have to, like, fucking deal with me if I was just like out skating, you know, like she was good enough like driving and practices and shit like that. So uh, yeah, she definitely encouraged me to skate and no, there was like zero team sports. I am an absolute jock. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I used to get dropped off at a recreation center after school um, so my mom could go finish work. You know, I got out at 3 and she'd go back to work until 5 and uh, then pick me up at 5.30 or something. So I basically grew up at a recreation center and um, I played tennis and basketball <laughs> and swim and baseball and everything. When I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a major league baseball pitcher. But, you know, I had no role models of that, you know, to look up to. So I, I quickly, like, abandoned that dream when I, you know, picked up skateboarding. And I saw that, you know, skateboarding was all inclusive. And uh, that, like, um, it was something that I could do and, like, be accepted, you know. Um, not that my goal was to become a professional skateboarder when I was a kid, but, you know, I had, like, you know, people to look up to and was welcomed. But, um, yeah, I like, I love to play basketball. I love tennis. I love, I mean, every sport, basically. Um, yeah, even, like, tag, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch him though. I like to play. <laughs> um, Sammy, I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, still play a lot of basketball. I played uh, soccer and basketball and lacrosse in high school. And then, um, and then I'd come home and like skate in my garage all night. Um, and it was. Yeah, I don't know. My it took a lot of convincing. Um, my parents didn't want me to skateboard at first, and I think they thought, like most kids, when they get into something, they give it up eventually. And and um, yeah, and my dad definitely like that's kind of the one thing we bonded over sp other sports. And so I think he was kind of just waiting for me to stop skateboarding, so I'd play other sports more. But uh. Yeah, two different things, sports and skateboarding, like I said, so it's, yeah, but I did both. <laughs> um, eighth grade, I used to play tackle football with big Samoan chicks. Yeah. And, and, you know, 
tackled really hard and she would feel it. And then try to skate after that. My mom didn't like me skateboarding at all. She always, till this day she tells me to get a fucking job. <laughs> you know. But it is what it is. She was totally against skateboarding. My dad was the number one fan about skateboarding, me skateboarding, so I'm super psyched about that. And that's it? That's it. <laughs> Sorry, I talk fast. <laughs> um, so, I did play sports. I, I was telling everybody last night that um, I was discouraged pretty quickly because like, um, at school, I was always the last to be picked during PE class. I mean, I wasn't even picked. I was, you know, when it got to me, nobody would even say anything and the teacher would just be like just go on that team so so that was you know i'm like all right i guess nobody wants me to be on their team and and so the alternative in physical education was to walk around the school so that's pretty much what i did <laughs> instead of playing pe because nobody it was kind of humiliating just to not even be picked i mean maybe it was like I was definitely a lot smaller. I mean, I'm small now, but, um, and I also never liked the idea of, um, I don't know, I, even as a little kid, I always felt like people were so clicky in their teams, and I just didn't like that, so, and I was just never interested in playing sports anyway. <laughs> Um, skateboarding, I don't think my mom ever knew what it was. I mean, we came to the States um, from Laos, and um, actually, I, when I first saw skating, it was in junior high, and I never actually saw anybody skate, but I, I saw the kids, like, carrying boards around, and I was like, oh, what that, what's that thing? Like, I want to... First, like even though I I didn't know what it was, I was like I want to do that thing. Um, but it wasn't until college, until like um, one of my friends found a skateboard and sold it to me. Um, I, I don't think I would have ever gotten into skateboarding because one we were always poor, and now that I know how much it costs, I would have never done it. And <laughs> my mom did not have any money, like that type of money, so. Um, so it's it's funny because it's a huge access thing, and it's awesome that we can actually, you know, bring it to a lot of kids that don't have that type of um, access. But yeah, my mom didn't know anything about skating. Uh, we just really spearheaded and represented for women playing competitive sports and like leveling the playing field. So there's something in Hawaii, uh, the culture there is very matriarchal. So I grew up where in like a family with like a legacy of aunts who murdered sports. Golf, volleyball, <laughs> no really, like surfing, like where you, you know, you go to the beach with your cousins and your grandma, three of your aunties, the five of your cousins and everyone's waiting for boards because all the aunties get to go first. You know, like <laughs> it wasn't a, um, it was just, like, hey, play sports, um, just natural. And I loved it, but then when I discovered uh, skateboarding through actually like hip hop, um, like music, culture, like breaking, skateboarding was considered like a fifth, like the fifth weird street element to hip hop. And that's how I got involved. And once I kind of figured it out and learned what to do, like, it, like my dad was supportive, my mom was supportive. Um, as long as I also went to practice and games for everything else, but I loved skateboarding. I loved that there was no, like, no, you don't have to go to practice. Politics of, like, did you show up? Are you wearing a uniform? Uh, play by the rules. Like, you don't have to talk to anyone. You, there were no lines. You did whatever, like, out of bounds, on the walls, like, off shit, on shit. I <laughs> fell in love with it, and it was a perfect, like escape from the weird like autumn like almost mindlessness of like playing competitive sports i could just be by myself learn tricks hang out with friends who you know like everyone played everything but it was special to like jamie and i share a friend um, 
Alfred. Alfred in Hawaii, and this guy had like five sisters, and they raised Boston Terriers, and he skated, and none of his sisters skated, but I'd like hang out with him and like skate, and it was so fun to just like break free and like find um, the creativity uh, in skateboarding and apply all of my jock mentality to it in a more, I don't know, constructive, like positive way. Thank you.